I'm just so excited to talk cobbler. Yay! Hello and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up a Notch. I'm Erin Jean McDowell and today we're talking about one of the best things you can make in the summer, a simple, easy, warm, comforting cobbler. I love cobbler and all the cobbler adjacent fruit desserts, things like crisp, buckle, pandowdy. Guys, I love cobbler. To me, a delicious cobbler is some kind of yummy, juicy, saucy filling topped with some kind of biscuity topping. And in this episode, we're gonna be making three different cobblers because I really wanna show you just how adaptable it can be. I'm gonna be sharing my base recipes for fillings and the biscuit topping. And I'm gonna show you that with just a few simple tweaks, the same base recipe can produce all of these different cobblery results. We're gonna make a savory cobbler. This is a corn tomato zucchini cobbler with a cheddar biscuit topping, a stone fruit cobbler with sort of a crumbly biscuit topping. This is definitely the most classic cobbler of the bunch. And then we're gonna make one of my famous cobbler pies, which mash up a good fruit pie with a good fruit cobbler. And that has a drop biscuit style topping. This is gonna be such a good episode and we have a lot to do. So let's get baking. In this episode, I'm offering a base biscuit recipe. And what I mean by that is this recipe can be used in a bunch of different ways. It can kind of go sweet or savory. You can add things like spices or extracts or even inclusions, things like chopped chocolate or nuts. You can really do whatever you want to this biscuit to make it your own. In this base biscuit recipe, we've got our pretty standard dry ingredients. We've got flour, we've got a chemical leavener, baking powder, and I usually add a little bit of sugar, even if I'm going a savory route because it helps to keep the biscuit moist. Then of course, we've got butter and plenty of it, which is what's gonna make that biscuit tender and have a little bit of flakiness that we love. The one kind of wild card ingredient is the liquid. Now this liquid can be a number of different things. I commonly use buttermilk. Sometimes I use regular milk. Sometimes Sometimes I use cream for a really rich biscuit, and I might even use ingredients like yogurt or sour cream to add a little bit of tang. Really any of these go, and the most important thing to know is how much of it you're going to add. You can use quite a bit of buttermilk, and you'll end up with something kind of sticky, like a drop biscuit topping. This is one of my favorites because the surface gets all craggy and delicious, gets a lot of nice browning in different kind of areas. You can also use a little bit less moisture, and then you'll have a biscuit dough that can be rolled out and cut. This is really nice when you want sort of a clean look or even coverage because it really presents very well. And then finally, if you add even less moisture, you can end up with sort of a crumbly topping that's a little bit more streusel-like. But again, all of these come from the same base biscuit recipe. It's just about how much liquid you add to get there. To make the biscuit, mix all your dry ingredients together in a bowl. Once they're fully combined, add cold cubed butter and use your hands or a pastry cutter to cut the butter into the flour until it's about the size of peas or smaller. We don't want any big pieces of butter in this particular biscuit dough. After the butter is incorporated, you can add any inclusions, things like chopped chocolate, pecans, shredded cheese, herbs. We don't wanna add those things while we're still mixing the butter in because it can actually make it harder to get the butter incorporated. Then finally, we'll add our liquid. And we'll add the amount that we need to make that final texture that we desire, whether we want a softer drop biscuit, a roll out and cut biscuit, or a streusel-like biscuit crumble. One of the reasons I love cobbler so much is it's very difficult to mess up cobbler filling. See, it's supposed to be saucy and juicy, which means you can make swaps, substitutions, combine different types of fruit. It's really very forgiving in most cases. This is actually also one of the reasons why I created the cobbler pie, because it's a much more forgiving type of pie. It's meant to be a little bit saucier and juicier, and then that biscuit topping soaks up some of those juices, making sort of a jammy layer between the biscuit and the fruit that I just love. If your filling ingredients are going to take longer than the biscuit topping to cook, 
or if you want to kind of combine flavors, you may need to pre-cook your ingredients before making the cobbler. But this isn't always necessary. One of the things I love about cobbler is you really can just toss fruit with sugar and a thickener and get it in the oven. But with savory cobblers, like the one we make today, pre-cooking not only makes sure that all the vegetables get cooked uniformly by the time the biscuit is done, it also gives a chance for those flavors to meld and combine into the final cobbler filling. When you are pre-cooking the filling, you can use that as an opportunity to just bake your cobbler in a skillet. Be sure to pick an oven-safe skillet to cook your filling in, then you can just dollop the biscuit right on top and into the oven. Less dishes. If you aren't pre-cooking the filling, it's usually as simple as just tossing the ingredients together to combine. So for a basic fruit filling, I would use something like granulated sugar and a thickener like cornstarch or flour. I use the same trick that I use when I'm making pie fillings, which is to combine the thickener, the cornstarch or the flour, with the granulated sugar. The granules of the sugar help to break up clumps of the thickener, which make it more easy to distribute in the rest of the filling. Remember, it is so important. In fact, it's essential that that filling come to a boil when it's baking in the oven. If the filling doesn't come to a boil, that thickener isn't activated, and it can make your cobbler filling taste a little bit starchy and off. It'll also make it extra runny, runnier than we want. Now, unlike pie filling, cobblers typically have way less thickener. Again, that's intentional. We want it to be saucy and juicy. Just like with the base biscuit recipe, I also have a base filling recipe, and it's really simple, just a few ingredients. And remember, you can also zhuzh it up with other flavors, things like citrus zest, spices, fresh herbs, extracts, flavorful liqueurs, whatever your heart desires. Let's talk about assembling your cobbler. I've got here all three of my different cobbler variations. Let's start with the stone fruit cobbler. The great thing about this cobbler is it has that more streusel-like crumbly sort of topping. So you can really decide how you want to disperse it. You can go all over even coverage, you can leave some spots. I typically like to leave a couple spots where maybe some juice can peek through just so I can see when it is bubbling and boiling because we talked about how important that is. And this particular cobbler is being baked in a nine by 13 pan. Really what you wanna look for is something between three and four quarts of capacity. Any of these recipes would work for that. So I'm just gonna keep crumbling. And remember, there are ingredients in this biscuit topping. They're gonna spread a little bit. So if you want that open extra space, just be cognizant of that because it's going to fill in a little bit once you are baking it. It is helpful in most cases to lightly grease your baking dish. It's not always necessary in the case of our savory cobbler. There is butter already in that filling. That's gonna be enough to make sure it doesn't stick too much. Plus I'm making it in a cast iron skillet. In this case, I did grease this three to four quart baking dish with some butter. And I like to do that also because of the flavor. Obviously that's gonna meld with our delicious fruit filling. So it's both gonna help create a non-stick surface and it's also gonna add a little flavor too. So there we have it, our first cobbler. Next, let's talk about the cobbler pie. So what I've got here is a par-baked pie crust already on its way to the Sturdy Pie Challenge. Hello, gorgeous. Got my fruit filling here. This is a mixed berry filling, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in a deep dish pie plate, which is important, because again, I just wanna make sure we have enough fruit because we also have crust and we have biscuit topping. If you don't have a deep dish pie pan and you still wanna make this, Use a tall cake pan, like a springform pan works great, but cake pans can be used for pies. That's something I, I try to impart on the world. Okay, and then I've got my drop biscuit topping here. And for that, I've got two spoons, and I just sort of like to dollop it all over. That's what gives it kind of the craggy texture that I just love. And again, it's up to you. You can leave it fairly full coverage or you can kind of dollop it on and leave some room for juices in between. There we've got our beautiful drop biscuit topped cobbler pie. I can't wait to bake this a second time to juicy perfection. All right, our last one is our cheddar savory biscuits that we made for this corn tomato zucchini cobbler. That's been chilling in the fridge. I'm gonna go grab it. Okay, here's my chilled biscuit dough. 
So this is one of the firmer doughs. It's firm enough that you can roll it out. I don't even usually roll it out though because we don't need to get it too thin. We only want it about three quarters of an inch thick, so I usually just pat it out with my hands. And with biscuits like this, they're much lighter and fluffier if you just let them be as tall as they want to be even before baking. And three quarters of an inch is a good amount in my opinion. So once I get this padded out, I'm gonna use a cutter to cut little circles. You can use different shapes. You could cut little stars out of this or diamonds or anything you can think of. But I just think presentation wise, that's one of the things that's nice. Cobbler is so simple and quick to put together. This is one very simple thing you can do, just takes an extra five minutes and really gussies it up. So I'm pressing the scraps together so that I can get a few more biscuits. No dough left behind. I always love when you get down to the last one and it's just like, can I make one more out of this? For this savory cobbler, because I pre-cooked it, it is kind of nice to let it cool for a little while before you start putting the biscuits on, just because again, we've done a lot of nice mixing work here. We don't want this to get all melty and buttery all over everything. Look at all these beautiful cobblers that we've made. They're all ready for the oven and I can't wait to get baking. There's one final thing I like to do on these, which is just any kind of toppings or finishes. In this case, it's really just whatever you want. If you want any additional texture on the biscuits, something like maybe you wanna put some melted cheese on the savory one, or maybe you wanna do some coarse turbinado sugar on your sweet ones. But I also really like to use an egg wash. An egg wash will help the biscuits to brown evenly. They'll help any inclusions or toppings like that that you wanna add stick. You can top these with egg wash or you can use a brushing of melted butter or cream. Sometimes if I'm using butter or cream, I'll even add a little bit of flavor to it, something like honey or maple syrup that will also caramelize on the surface of the biscuit. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of egg washing numbers on these and then they're ready for the oven. They're gonna get baked at 375 degrees until the biscuit is golden brown and that filling is visibly bubbling. That's the most important part. This has been such a delicious episode of Bake It Up A Notch. The house has smelled so good today while making all of these. The savory cobbler with the cheddar biscuit topping, our incredible cobbler pie, and our stone fruit cobbler. All of these baked until they vigorously bubbled up and that's why you're even gonna see in some cases some darkness around the edge of the pan. And we wanna see nice, good browning and texture on the biscuit. These are all looking incredible and I'm just gonna have to dive right in. Let's start savory because, you know, just treat it like a meal. Get plenty of vegetables on my fork there. Mm. This is such a great summer dish. The base, tastes like everything that's good in the summer. That sweet corn, the zucchini, really, really good tomatoes. And then that little bit of spicy, cheddary biscuit. Takes it into full meal territory. And best of all, it was so easy to make. Okay, let's have a little bit of stone fruit cobbler too. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I love the crumbly biscuit topping. That cragginess, the honey, that I put into the wash for these. It's just in all those nooks and crannies. Some parts are crispier, some parts are softer, and then the fruit is just so tender. And these nectarines had such a beautiful color. They're kind of rosy by the end. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, finally, gotta end with some pie, obviously. And what you can see here is exactly what I was talking about. Normally I'm a big advocate for sliceability of pies, but in this case, it's intentionally very juicy because it's the best of cobbler and the best of pie. So we've got a crispy, mm, flaky crust. You know this pie passed the sturdy by challenge. It's sturdy. It's still a little warm, which is the best way to eat this cobbler pie. Honestly, this needs a little ice cream, but that's not really a need. That's more of like, a deep desire. <laughs> it's great all on its own. The berries are so juicy and they've not fully broken down. I think that's my favorite part about it is we've got all that juiciness. The berries are tender, but when I bite into them, I'm still getting like that 
mm, squish, that juicy moment. All of these cobblers are so killer and I hope this episode really inspired you to see just how versatile and creative you can get with your own cobblers at home. If this does inspire you to get baking, please use hashtag bake it up a notch because I love to see what's coming out of your kitchens. And if you want to try any of these recipes, they are all linked in the video description below. So head there to snag them or head to food52.com. Until next time, I've got a lot of cobbler to eat, so happy baking.